Ich habe übrigens letztens, ich weiß nicht, ob ihr das schon mal irgendwo bei, äh, bei TikTok oder so gesehen habt. Ich habe letztens, ist mir irgendwie so ein, so ein, so ein Reel äh, reingespült worden von jemand, der sich so ein der sich so in so einen Raum gebastelt hat, nur für Formel 1. Und das fand ich ziemlich, äh, das fand ich ziemlich äh, interessant. Und glücklicherweise gibt es wohl davon eine Roomtour, eine komplette, die man sich mal angucken kann. Und ich glaube, da wurde Wohnzimmer wurde durchgespielt. Und das würde ich mir jetzt gerne mal mit euch angucken, weil in dem Reel sah das schon echt krass aus, aber da waren auch nur so kleine Ausschnitte davon zu sehen. Lasst uns das mal kurz angucken wie das äh, aussieht. Welcome back to Game Room Theater, guys. Now check this out, my F1 video went extremely viral and a whole lot of you guys are interested in how to replicate this setup. So I'm going to be sharing that with you in this video and just look at it. It just continues everywhere. I'm going to be hosting an F1 party for the Vegas event. What the actual F? Oh, wow! And I wanted to be able to share with you guys exactly how to get a crazy, insane setup like this. So stay tuned. Guys, back in my theater room, I'm gonna turn this into an amateur hour. So if you guys recall, if you followed me many, a couple of years ago, I shouldn't say many years ago, my social media is not that old, but um, I want to make this completely unscripted. It'll be amateur hour in the sense that I'm just turning this on and talking about it in a bit more detail so you guys can figure out, you know, which kind of setup you want. So I want to treat this as a separate setup than the outside setup that's going on over there. Ay, caramba. And the reason for that is I've got a, a, a different PC running in here that's connected to these screens versus what's going on back there. You can link it all up, but it's just, I don't, my, you know, I didn't bring my, uh, my higher graphics card, uh, better processor downstairs, and that's sitting in my office. So the core of this, all this, guys, is an F1 subscription with multi-viewer, F1 multi-viewer. I'll have links in the description of this video uh, to help you guys uh, directly get those kinds of apps. But the F1 subscription is rather cheap in my opinion for what you get. So it's 99 bucks for the year or it's, I believe it's 12 or 12.99 uh, per month if you wanted to do monthly. So, you know, I started get, I was curious a couple of weeks ago there that there has to be a better way to watch this um, you, you know, even if you're not a huge F1 fan, if you're watching it like this, trust me, you'll be a fan. I've got a whole bunch of buddies that, uh... Nee, das ist immer noch nicht. Trotzdem muss man sagen, ist das impressive. Also, uff. Uh, uh, wanna just come over and be able to watch it in this way. So, I'll, uh, so once again, guys, what's going on is an F1 subscription with F1 multi-viewer. So an F1 subscription will allow you to get uh, this along with data trackers and on their website you'll be able to check out the in-cam footage of the drivers. So before I show you guys what the, what the actual application looks like once I launch it, let me just talk about how I'm dis what I'm displaying and how I'm displaying it. So temporarily, I've got my 4K laser projector from AWOL sitting down here. And my Vivid Storm screen is right here. It's an uh, ambient light rejecting fluorizer. And, um, and I've, this is where I've decided to raise it to just, just above the bottom of the TV from the seated position uh, so that I can project there. But these actually look like tiny screens. That's the level of clarity of a triple laser projector. Uh, anyway, so... Ach so, das ist ein Pro okay. So that's that, and then this is my standard 75-inch screen. 
Ja, das hat so jeder zu Hause. 57 Zoll, äh, 75 Zoll, klar. And I am wirelessly casting with my Windows 11 Tiny PC to my Mini Jumbotron. You see, I've got another Tiny PC in there. And what I mean by Tiny PC, hang on, let me just show you guys. This is a, a Tiny PC from Geekom. It's the Mini IT12. The, it's an i7. It's a rather powerful processor. I'll share the specs uh, in, a, in an updated video when I do a review video on that specifically. But that tiny PC is actually what's powering that screen. All of these, as well as the processing to wirelessly use my mini Jumbotron as a display as well. And all this is completely linked up. But inside my mini Jumbotron and in the side screens that you see there as well, I do run their cheaper models, which are more than sufficient for the purposes that I need them for. This is, a, this is their Geekom model as well, and that is sitting inside the mini Jumbotron, and that, that is what's allowing it to wirelessly communicate with the IT12. I have all of this hooked up to my sound system and audio video receiver, so that's how I'm able to get audio out of that tiny PC Uh, into the rest of the room. Wow. One key thing to watch for again, guys, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you, you don't want to use multiple devices and multiple feeds uh, that can't be synced up. Because if it can't be synced up and it goes off, then this is not fun because that'll be off by a few seconds by from here, from a few seconds from there. And it really doesn't It really doesn't lend to the viewing experience. And to control everything, I actually use unified remote. So I have a, I have a server running on the tiny PC. And if you can see my mouse, you probably can't see it on the screen there. But uh, let me use that right now to make sure that it's, everything is synchronized with my feed. You can press S or you can do it manually by just saying sync open players and you'll see in real time all of the in-car footage. If it, if it was getting misaligned by a few milliseconds or a second or two, it is now completely aligned again, and then their positions <laughs> Dude, der ist ja richtig geil drauf, Junge. Also got completely aligned. So basically, it synchronizes all open um, screens, including what I've got on the ceiling here. And guys, this is completely redundant of something like this because, you know, from my seating, seated position, I, I get real-time positions on the track, you know, replaying the Monaco race. And um, I just really use this as decoration. It's completely redundant. It's basically because uh, in F1 Multiviewer, I, uh, I have some settings where Uh, I had this available because what's happening with my 4K laser projector is uh, it's casting black. I've got a black background from this level and above uh, until it reached that point because this screen is only partially up. So if I had the screen up, it would probably land somewhere here then block this big screen and um, I didn't want to do that. So I have this just basically <laughs> Broadcasting on the ceiling because I had an extra spot. Ja, Mensch. Hat man ja so über, ne? Oh, wow. So now comes the boring part, guys. Uh, this is where I go into a lot more detail for, and this is especially for those that. Bald verliere ich dabei. Die sehe viel gut. You know, fine, you were wowed by the whole setup and everything, but now I actually want to be able to recreate this in your space using multiple screens, or even if it's just the one screen. So here's what's going on, guys. Let me, uh, let me show you guys. Once again, I'm using, I've configured uh, MultiViewer to work with, uh, with this Windows 11 PC, and uh, I've got a unified remote. And again, I'll have a link to him in my bio to him. As you can see, my mouse move in there. Uh, this is just so much more convenient. If I want to bring up my keyboard, I can, and send some messages as well. So I never have to touch my keyboard again, uh, and I don't want to have it out on display in this main space. So let's open up 
multi-viewer. So I've already got my F1 subscription. You can go to the F1's official website and get F1 TV. You just need one simple subscription. Um, and, um, and, right, and, and basically fun. in multi-viewer, uh, I'm not going to go into that level of detail because it's completely uh, irrelevant. Uh, if you're going to make this kind of effort, you got to you gotta at least be able to, to turn on your laptop and be able to do some basic things. So anyway, uh, I'm logged into my F1 through MultiViewer. It's linked. It, you basically granted access. And let me see if I need to zoom in here. Because again, guys, I said it's amateur hour. I'm not doing screen recording. Uh, I just want to show this in real time and because the F1 race is going to happen in Las Vegas and a lot of people are interested uh, after they saw my viral video and setting this up and hosting a party. So anyway, let's... let's. Ja, das macht man dann auch einfach mal. Wenn man so eine Party schmeißen will, dann gibt man auch mal zwei, drei Mark aus. So. Open up F1 Multiviewer and the, specifically the F1 TV. And let's just say you want to watch the Sao Paulo Grand Prix race. Um, you know, obviously nothing is live right now. There's no race this particular weekend that I'm shooting this video, but let's just click on replay. So now that I've clicked on replay, I have some options here. Um, you know, I can open up various different streams. This is in-car footage of the various drivers, as you can see, like, you know, 20 or so. Um, you have a data channel, you have a driver tracker, uh, F1 live, the actual live uh, footage with a split screen video commentary uh, or you can watch the international feed. This is my usual go-to. Uh, I have a bias for watching F1 uh, for commentators that have a British accent or an English accent as they say and uh, I typically watch that. Uh, that. And the replay live timing, this is important to open and I'll get to it in a minute. So here's, you can open up all of these. They Basically they open in a cascading window. Let me do that right now. Let's just say you want this, this, and you like this driver and that driver, and maybe this guy too. And you got uh, you want to see some live timing and the live footage as well. So all you do is click Open Selected, and it'll cascade, right? So it's going to show up like this, and this is probably wow, the live was. timing. It's just loading up. Yeah, see, this is live timing. This is important to open up because in your in-car footage of the drivers you 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 get an overlay like this on top with more statistics wie krass ist denn F, äh, f1 tv mittlerweile das ist ja richtig sick was sie alles ausspucken again i'm not the, the point is not to go over the statistics of what you're looking at and i and i'd be lying if i said if i knew what everything is i'm a recent fan to this degree <laughs> I'm a recent fan und hat unten so ein Ding, Alter. <laughs> Wie krass. Um, so, and then the other overlay in the races is getting this thing. Let me see if I can zoom in some more. Uh, yeah, there you go. So you can you can get uh, speeds of the car and Gs or whatever else that, the, that it's pulling, I guess. Um, I just like how pretty it looks. So let me turn that back off. Actually, I'll leave it on. So anyway, now what you can do is resize this, position this place, this. say you want this there, you want the other screen here, here. So you position it to however you want. If you got multiple screens, then you know I can put it, uh, let me go up and zoom out again. Uh, I can put it on this screen, or I can put it on the ceiling, or I can put it on my Jumbotron. So let's just continue on. So say you want uh, the next screen, also wenn der jetzt noch eine App hat, wo er einen Klick macht und alles wird automatisch, äh, automatisch hinge hingeschmissen, dann bin ich komplett äh, drauf. To be positioned here. I I'm just showing you guys, like, you know, this is obviously not where I'm going to let it reside. You can, uh, you can double tap to basically change the aspect ratio, switch the audio streams of those individual feeds. There's so much more going on there, guys. You can set the size, you know, quarter half, one-fifth, etc. Send this to the bottom corner of your of your screen. Or, like I said, drag this down uh, to another screen. So, let me zoom out again. So as you can see, you know, I could place one screen here, or I could resize this and do another one, another one, another one, another one, like, you guys get the drill. So say you, you're, you're satisfied with the positions of all of this, 
then uh, uh, all you're gonna do is open up MultiViewer, like the main screen again. Let me do that now. And you're gonna say, maybe you guys can't read that. Let me zoom in a little bit more. You're just gonna go save setup. Ah. So under save setup, then the next time you open up F1 MultiViewer, um, it'll remember all of these positions that you oh, saved. Oh, okay, so got let me it. demonstrate the positions that I had uh, already saved. So I just go to open setup and I had my, one of my saved scenes. Let me see if I can zoom out a little bit and show you guys how it'll look it once, gets as soon as I open it. So let's just click on this and open setup. And look at that. This is the setup that I saved and it's literally that freaking easy. Um, and look at this. All started, ready to go. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Und jetzt ist oben auch alles ready? Oh, completely synced. What the fuck? Wow. Showing up on my Jumbotron as well because I'm using that same tiny PC one more time as my uh, my uh, wireless display as my third screen. And that's, and there, and there again, once again, guys, the reason to do this is because of synchronization. You want to limit it to one PC so that you uh, that you have you have complete control um, over keeping things synchronized. Now, in order to forward things, so let me just show you guys here. So one of the gotchas to watch for is like you know I'm I'm uh, gonna I'm gonna move this stream a little bit further along. So let's just say on the main screen, I want to watch you know from 25 or 30 minutes on. So now what's happened, let me zoom out again, is that main screen is no longer synchronized with the in-car footage nor with the map up there. Um, so all you have to do in that situation is you see, you see on, the, on the right side of the screen, there's a little um, refresh button that I'm on right there, as you can see. So I'm gonna click that. And it, then it basically asks for um, uh, synchronizing all, all open players. You can press S as well, I'm just demonstrating this for now. So if I press that, as you can see, all the images in the bottom have now completely synchronized to the. <laughs> what the fuck? Das ist ja richtig krass. This main feed, as has the map that you see here is completely synchronized to this feed. So what, what ends up happening is when you start watching this for a long period of time, there's some latency and other issues that uh, I can't speak of to in, in detail, but things get misaligned. That'll be misaligned with this and not real time. And that may be off by a second or two from this. So if you notice any kind of lag, I, th I think they have some some auto synchronization to you guys, multi-viewer, F1 multi-viewer, the official people that uh, work on this, maybe perhaps you can elaborate in the comments. Um, uh, I just wanted to make sure that the basics are out there for people to be able to replicate this. I, I basically just watch for synchronization issues and I press S maybe every five or 10 minutes. Uh, if that, if it may not even be necessary, but I'm just wondering, there probably is a way to automate that. Uh, even further. Wow. One of the other things I want to mention, guys, is I do have these screens. So if you saw in that viral video, I had uh, I had the stats going here too. But I was doing that because I have another PC that's uh, that runs these screens. I didn't actually bring that online right now because I don't have it linked to that same uh, mini PC from Geekom. And the reason for that is. From what I'm aware of, Windows 11 only allows you to wirelessly use one display. And this is one display just using an HDMI uh, splitter to display on all the screens. So because of that issue and having to manually synchronize for, this, for the sake of this live, I don't have the stat showing up here. But I can and just manually watch for some latency by running F1 MultiViewer there as well. Or you can just run the F1 uh, uh, TV app. Guys, that one F1 TV stream, you can stream onto six devices in your home. 
and do multiple streams even uh, in one particular device as I just demonstrated. <laughs> so it's pretty damn awesome. Um, I hope you guys find this useful to basically yep. replicate in your space as best as you can. I'm gonna be shooting some more videos in this format, guys, where I just kind of turn the camera on. There's some ums and ahs as I'm thinking about some things as I talk about. So I wanna be able to have a conversation, conversational way of showing you guys versus super polished content where it's just very, very high end and professional looking and it takes a lot more time. I'd rather just talk, turn the camera on, be able to talk to you guys. I hope you appreciate and enjoy this content. And uh, let me know in the comments, guys, what you think. And if you have any questions on this setup, I'm sure my friends from MultiViewer uh, will be able to answer some questions as well. Take care, guys. And don't forget to subscribe and share this video if you find it useful. Mara, das ist richtig cool. Das ist richtig, richtig cool. Wow. Vor allen Dingen ist das so simpel, also, also so, so simpel umgesetzt. Krass. Ich gucke kein Formel 1, nee. Ich habe mit Formel 1 überhaupt nichts zu tun. Aber dafür, das hier kann ich trotzdem appreciaten. Das kann ich appreciaten, weil also der Gedanke dahinter, den, also die Gedanken, die sich da gemacht wurden, sind wirklich sehr krass. Es ist schon, da ist sehr viel Gehirnschmalz drin.